Right, good morning, Warriors. We are live from the quarantine zone. It's Friday. Uh, we've got a fun, uh, fun workout lined up for you. We're going to do a lot of a lot of mobility today to uh, get loose for our hurricane that we're going to knock out this morning. So I'm, I'm really excited. Get that blood pumping, burn, burn some uh, energy, burn some calories, um, have a lot of fun, and uh, get that mind mindset strengthened for for uh, the weekend ahead. And um, uh, the story that I'm going to share with you today is one of my favorite stories. Being a, a, a coach and a business owner, and uh, you know, life is a lot about mindset. And um, this is a story of a, of a salesman who sells Cutco knives. And uh, this, this basically, to, to, to get you up to speed, he, he lives off of what he sells. So he's got to sell knives in order to pay his rent. And he's, he's not that great of a salesman. He's going door to door, he's making his phone calls, he's trying to get in front of people to sell these knives. And uh, he's, he's coming up on the first of the month, his rent's due, he doesn't have the money, so he really, really needs to uh, move some knives in order to, uh, to, figure, out, to figure out how he's gonna, how he's gonna get along. And uh, he, he wakes up you know, on, a, on Friday, the last day of the week. He's got three appointments in the morning, three appointments in the afternoon. He, uh, he's feeling pretty discouraged. He goes to his, his morning appointments. He doesn't sell any knives. He's, he's kind of beating himself up. He, he doesn't even want to finish the day. He's like, man, I'm, I'm, I just need to find a new job. I need to, I need to get out of this business. And uh, he, he calls home, calls his wife, and uh, he's just complaining. He's like, honey, like, you know, I don't know if I can do it. I don't think, like, I don't think that I'm cut out for this. I don't think that uh, it's good. You know, I don't think this is working. I don't know what to do. I don't know what we're going to do about money. And she's listening, and she's like, well, I, I, I get it, honey. I understand. And I, was, I have some good news for you. I was going to wait until you got home to tell you, but since you're clearly upset, I just thought I'll cheer you up, all right, for the rest of your day. You know, my, uh, my, my uncle died uh, about six months ago. His estate finally cleared, and uh, I, I, just, I just got a, a pretty significant inheritance. So we don't have to worry about money for some time. It's a pretty significant check. So I just want to cheer you up and, um, and, and, and make you feel a little bit better uh, uh, so you don't, you, you don't, you're not so depressed. And he's relieved. He's, he's excited. He's happy. He, he's, uh, the, the, pre the weight's lifted off his shoulders. And she's like, it doesn't matter whether or not you sell any more knives. Uh, just... Uh, I'll, I'll see you when you get home from work tonight. So he goes to his, his uh, final three appointments. He's like, I don't even care if I, you know, who cares about these knives? And then he, uh, he, sells, he, he sells, you know, uh, all three of his appointments and, uh, you know, and, and gets a little uh, commission. And he's, he's just, you know, elated, comes home, grabs a bottle of wine from the store, you know, busts open the door and said, honey, let's celebrate. And uh, his wife looks at him and goes, oh, celebrate what? And he's like, the inheritance that you got. And she's like, oh, I just made that up to make you feel better, honey. <laughs> and what you might find after you murder your spouse is, is that uh, just deciding to, to feel like everything is OK, just having that sense that you're, you're going to be all right, that things are going to work out, that, um, uh, that taking away that sense of desperate need for certainty um, it's, a, it's a choice, right? And once you click, flick that switch, then all that pressure and all that anxiety and all that stuff, it, it goes away. And it's, it's, it's challenging to do on your own, right? But oftentimes when we have permission from outside sources or from the external, uh, we can get there. But if it's a choice, if, you just, if it's just a belief, you can choose to believe that everything is okay. And then you're a better cut cone knives salesperson, you're a better parent, you're a better uh, uh, spouse, you're a better uh, son or daughter. So having that sense of certainty and that, just in that inside of you, that compass, that everything is gonna be all right, uh, uh, that, that empowers you to then be free to do all the other things. And part of the way that you do that is by taking care of yourself, by filling your cup first, by getting the exercise in, the sleep, the, the food, the water, and making sure that your, your ship is ready to sail at all times. So let's get ready to sail. Let's, uh, let's fill our cup and let's uh, kick some butt.
on this workout. Today, I'm trying to announce the things that you'll need for the workout. Today, all you're gonna need is a weight, a kettlebell or a dumbbell if you've got one, so you can do some kettlebell swings. But we're gonna do a lot of stretches on the floor, so if you have a mat or a soft floor, that, that'll be good too. But you won't need a couch, um, and unless you, you're doing push-ups off a countertop or anything, you shouldn't need uh, any other equipment for this, extra, for this workout. We're gonna start uh, by warming up our arms, shoulders, hips. We're gonna do some inchworms. So when I'm doing the inchworm, I'm standing, heels about hips width apart, so not far apart. I'm gonna reach down, keeping my legs straight, and I'm gonna walk out into a plank, and then I'm gonna walk back. Touch the toe, and then I'm gonna walk out, walk back. One of the great things about this inchworm that we're doing, you can add a push-up to it if you're, if you're really hardcore, but when you're coming back, you're gonna push your hips up in the air, and so now I'm stretching that arm overhead, and I'm getting, getting more overhead mobility out of that shoulder, which is great because we don't do a lot of overhead stuff in our everyday lives. So we're gonna do 10 inchworms. Coming up and out. Getting that heart rate going. Once you're done with those inchworms, we're going to do a uh, Cossack lunge. What is that, you ask? I'll show you. This is fun. So I'm gonna step out and do a deep lunge. I'm gonna drop down towards my heel with the goal of putting my hamstring on my calf. I'm gonna pull my toe back on the opposite foot. So I'm gonna drop down into this hamstring groin stretch. Ah, and I'm gonna stand up. Whoop. And then I'm gonna switch to the other side, pulling that toe back towards me as I drop, keeping that chest up. Standing back up. We're gonna go back and forth. We're gonna do five per side. When I'm dropping down, you wanna make sure that your weight's in your heel, chest stays vertical. You're gonna get as low as you can. Back to the center all the way through, chest up, oh yeah. So really opening up the hamstrings, groin, letting that pelvis separate. And this lateral plane, the coronal plane, I think is the, uh, the actual term. No, transverse. Wow, I don't really talk like that anymore. I think I'll look up some stuff. One more on each side. And then, hi ha <laughs> Shake it off, nice. Now we're gonna do some lunge and windmills. What this means is I'm going to get in a deep lunge, stretching out. My palms are gonna be in the same line as my heel of the lead leg. So I'm here, so my back leg is stiff, so I'm pushing my back heel back away from me. My lead knee is driving forward. My pelvis is doing, going in two different directions on each side. That's good, that's what I want. Then I'm gonna take my inside arm, reaching all the way forward. I'm gonna rotate, hand to the sky, eyes following the hands. I'm gonna spin that arm around until it becomes perpendicular, or sorry, uh, parallel to the floor. Bend the elbow. Dropping that elbow all the way down to the foot. Planting. Switching up. Same thing. Back leg is pushing back. Lead, lead leg is pushing away. My inside arm is here now. Gonna push out. Reach up. Rotate. Par parallel to the floor. Bend the elbow. Drop it down. Yeah. Switching feet back to the beginning. This is our second round. All the way out. Rotating through. Bending that elbow. Coming back down into the perfect stretch. Oh, our world's greatest stretch, as some call it. Switching out. Left foot forward for me. 
long, up, rotate at the shoulder like a rotisserie chicken, bending, drop down. All right, we're gonna do one more time. Kicking through. This one is for Sarah, this is her favorite stretch. All the way up, rotate back down. Elbow comes down to that lead heel. Drop, switch through. Lock it out. Up, down. Yeah, nice. Walking back out of the windmill. Whew. Okay, now we're loosening up our hips, groin, quads. We're gonna do a T-spine plank. So we're gonna fire up the core just a little bit before we get this party really started. And I'm going to use my pad here to help me out. I'm gonna be on my toes. Feet are pretty wide, so I'm stable. I'm here on the ground, hips are the same height as the shoulders. Reaching my elbow up, dropping it down, other side. I'm rotating at the upper back. That's, we're going two per side. I wanna do five per side, just to get that, the abs, arms, everything warmed up for this training we're about to do. Three. I'm going for five reps per side. Ha ha. Okay. Now it's time to warm up those legs. We're going to be doing a lot of swings this, uh, this circuit. So I have a kettlebell here. If you have uh, a kettlebell, you can use it at home. I know that not everybody has all the weights that they need. So if you need to do more, I'm gonna do 10 swings. If you have a light kettlebell and you wanna do 20, or if you have a kettlebell that's heavy for you, you can only do five or eight or 10, that's fine. But if you don't have a kettlebell, you're gonna do squats. Uh, so I'll demonstrate the, the tool for the swing or the, the, the execution for the swing. And if you're following along with nothing, you're just gonna do squats. Every time I do a warm up, you'll do 10 squats. So we're starting out here. I'm in front of my kettlebell and I'm gonna warm up the hinge pattern by doing 10 reps of touching that, touching that handle, letting my butt drift back. My knees are bending, but just enough to allow me to hinge over without falling over. So chest stays up, touching that handle. I'm gonna do 10 reps here. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes on the way up driving my butt forward, getting that warmed up. I'm gonna do 10 reps of that. Powering through. My toes, my heels are about shoulder width apart. Toes are pointed out at 20 degrees, just like this. So I've done that, that 10 reps now. I'm gonna stand over the kettlebell and I'm doing 10 reps again. This time it's underneath me so I don't have to go as far. So I'm warming up that position. Again, toes out 20 degrees. Pressure is on the heel of the foot, the ball of the big toe, the ball of the pinky toe. Driving through. 10 reps there. Now, once I've done that, I want to start to do my kettlebell deadlift. So if you're doing squats, we're gonna keep doing squats to warm this up and now we're picking up our kettlebell and setting it down. So that's one. It's almost the same exact movement that we were just doing. This time I've got the weight in my hand. So I'm gonna do 10 reps here. Chest is up, eyes are forward. Squeezing the glutes on the way through. Nice. So we've done a bunch of these hinge warm-ups. Now we're gonna do our first swings. So 
I'm going to stand behind the kettlebell, so I'm, I'm about one step backwards from it. Again, same position, toes pointed out to about 20 degrees. I'm going to tilt the kettlebell back to me. I'm going to throw it, and I'm standing up, firing it through, and I'm pushing that kettlebell back down, throwing it at my groin, exhaling forcefully as I squeeze the glutes together for 10 swings. Boom. So 10 swings or 10 more squats if you're doing those. And so we're going to do a circuit of exercises. We're going to start with 10 swings. Then we're going to go into alt leg V-ups from the floor and push-ups. So our push-up, if you, if you need a box, or sorry, a, a couch or a chair or something to do push-ups from, set it, set it up for yourself. But you do it just like you do it on the floor. Your feet and knees are together, hands underneath the shoulders, and you're going to corkscrew that shoulder into your rib cage as you pull yourself to the floor or the couch. So here I am pulling myself down to the floor, exploding up. Pulling myself down to the floor, exploding up. So you're priming that push up, give me 10 good reps, finding that appropriate surface. If you're almost able to do a push up from the floor, but not quite, what you can do is you can do an eccentric. So you're here and you do the down, but instead of doing a kneeling push up, you just get back up to the top by using your legs and arms, and then you're gonna drop down slowly. So then you can practice the technique that you're gonna need for the real push up and you're building up that strength. For the uh, alt leg V-up, all we're going to do is we're going to lie down, keep your leg locked out, kick up that foot over your hip, touch, and then I'm trying to bring my shoulder blades up off the ground, alternating back and forth. All right, so you're gonna do five reps on each side just to practice that alt leg V up. Make sure that foot goes above your hip, leg is locked out. If you lock out that quad, it forces that hamstring to stretch and that's what we want. All right, we're gonna start the hurricane. So we're gonna go swings, V ups, push ups, and then we're gonna rest. I'm gonna rest for about 30 seconds before I go. If you're hardcore and you like to, you want to keep your heart rate up, you can go faster than that. If you need more rest, you can go slower. I'm going to go about a 30 second rest before I start each circuit. I'll do, we'll do the circuit three times, then we'll move on to the next circuit. So again, 10 swings, eight alt leg V-ups per side for a total of 16 if you like to count every single rep, and 10 push-ups. All right, let's get going. And one, two, three. So I'm swinging and I'm forcing that exhale. That sound of the air escaping the tire is me pushing the air out of my mouth and using that back pressure to create more abdominal tension. I'm on the ground doing my alt leg V up. That's one. That's two. Keep that leg locked. Mobilize that hamstring. Keep rocking and rolling. Shoulder blades got to get up off the ground. Got to stretch that hammy. Six. Seven. Eight. On each side. Ten push-ups. Feet together, knees together. Dropping down. Up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, 30 seconds rest. So, when you're doing this, 
you get a little bit of water. Whatever makes you feel good. Again, if you're like Chris or Francie, maybe you're already onto your second circuit, that that's fine. I'm gonna get started in five, four, three, two, and I'm swinging. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back to y'all, leg me up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, rolling into the push up. Once you've done your eight reps per side, making that push up look good. All the way down, explode up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woohoo! All right. Round two. So the kettlebell swing, which we're going to be doing a lot of today, it doesn't just train the glutes and the abs, it trains the lats as well. The big muscles on the side of your body. When you're holding on, think about trying to bend the handle of that kettlebell, but not with the wrist, with the shoulder. When you do that, it forces that kettlebell to swing a, a little bit faster. And it also keeps the tension in the abs and in that core. All that is made possible because of the lat, which connects the shoulder and the arm to the hip. So it's like a super muscle. Don't leave it out. Speaking of which, time to swing again. All right, third set. Last set. Last set. Boom. Yes. All right. Now we're moving. Halfway home, eight per side. Five, six, keep that leg locked. Woohoo! From there, you're rolling into the push up. Again, feet together, knees together, squeezing those glutes. Ten reps. Wow, ten push-ups never felt so hard. Woohoo! Okay. So, get your wind back. Grab some water. We're about to start a second circuit. So. We're gonna do the kettlebell swing, and then we're gonna do the squat and the speed skater. Now squats, heels at shoulder width, toes out to a 20 degree. That's a kind of a default stance. If you know what works best for you, stick with that for now. And you're gonna do 12 reps, chest up, dropping the hips down, driving the glutes forward. So. The only difference between a squat and a kettlebell swing or a hinge is on a squat, the butt goes down. 
on a, on a swing, the butt goes back. Back and forth versus up and down. So we'll be doing squats. If you don't have a kettlebell, you guessed it, you'll be doing two sets of squats in a row. Got to get those legs trained. Speed skaters. This is fun. So what we're going to do is you're going to have a, if you have a mat, this actually works really well. You're going to hop from one side to the other. When you land, you're going to kind of do a curtsy lunge and go side to side. Just like a US speed skater. Going back and forth. And then if you're super athletic and you want to do a big jump, that's great. But it's side to side. You're going to do 10 reps on each side. And that is our speed skater exercise. So we're going to do swings, squats, speed skaters, all in a row, take a 30 second break, and then get back after it. Swings, squats, speed skaters. Mm -mm, good. All right. My heart rate is almost fully recovered. So we're going to rest about 10 more seconds. And then we're going to start our third circuit. Woo -hoo -hoo. Starting in three, two, one, and go. Boom. Boom. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Ten swings, twelve squats. Going back to basics. When you're squatting, chest up, pressure on the outside of your foot, driving your glutes forward. Six, seven. Squeezing that walnut in your butt cheeks, exhaling as you go up. Boom. Then the speed skater. Ha ha. 10 per side. Two, three, four. Curtsy lunge. Yeah. Back and forth. Nine and ten. All right. So you notice when you do three leg drills in a row, that heart rate gets going great. So. We're letting it calm down. I'm going to take 30 seconds of rest. You can't take more. You can't take less. Whew. V, V, V stance, superhero stance if you're resting. If you're done with your rest period. Get back after it with your second set. I'm starting mine right about meow. Okay, but back, chest up. I'm bending that bar, using my lats, speeding up that kettlebell swing. Five, six. Exhale forcefully at the tops. And then from there, going right into the squat. So dropping down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Excellent. You want to make that squat harder? You can do like Coach Bootsy's doing. Prisoner version. Elbows behind your head, fingertips interlaced, squeezing those shoulder blades together. That will pick up the space. That will pick up your heart rate. Now, speed skater, back and forth. Two. Yeah, yeah. Three, four, five, six. I don't know why, but I always feel like I'm dancing when I do this. 
nine, 10 on each side. Oh yeah. That's round two. Again, letting that heart rate calm down. So that, the interval in high intensity interval training is the work to rest ratio, it's how much rest you're getting. But what, if you look at an EKG, what you're seeing is the heart rate, climb, and then drop. Climb, and then drop. Climb, and then drop. And that, that pattern of training birds up all kinds of different energy systems of the body. Short-term energy systems, medium-term, lactic acid threshold. What does that mean? That means that workout is taxing all the body systems at the same time so that you're building coming back stronger when you go through a proper recovery phase, which we will do after this third set. Last set. Last set. Back to the swing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. Twelve squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woo -wee. Then the speed skater coming down the mountain, finishing strong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one zero. Boom. Superhero pose. Victory. Get your water. Get that rest. All right. So for our third phase, our third circuit, we're going to do, yes, for our metabolic driver, the kettlebell swing. We will also do the sit out. So the sit out, it's an old wrestling move. I'm here on all fours, pivoting to the outside foot, toes pointed out, dropping through, coming right back to where I started, pivoting. My knees won't touch the ground. So I'm gonna go through, kicking, eight per side. So it's quite a few sit outs. Stay strong, finish strong. We're gonna go from that to the side crunch. So the side crunch, I'm here, lying on the, on the mat. And what I'm doing is I'm just lifting my shoulders up off the ground, trying to touch my rib cage to my hip. So I'm doing that. The knees are at a 90 degree angle to balance so you don't roll over while you're lifting that shoulder off the ground. The difference between moving your head, getting that shoulder up is a lot. So get, get your torso off the ground if you can. That, that extra inch matters so to your obliques, to your abs. So hit it. You're gonna do 10 per side and then you're gonna switch to the other side and do it. So we're gonna do swings, sit outs, side crunches, all in a row. All right, third circuit. Let's get this party started. And begin. 10 reps on that swing. You should be used to it by now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Ha ha. 10 reps. Then, rolling into the sit-out. I'm here. I'm gonna go to 
to the right first. The left is one. This trains the arms, the legs, the core. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha! Side crunch. So, here on the ground, not just the head, shoulders too. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. No problem. One down, two more to go. Swings, sit outs, side crunch. So, I'm getting my water. Hopefully you're feeling hydrated, feeling rested, feeling strong. All right, I'm gonna start my next round. When you're ready to be powerful and strong, you get back after it, only the good reps. Save the bad ones for later. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! Woohoo! Sit outs. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Ha, 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 ha. And side crunch. Two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo -hoo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha. All right. Second round down. Whenever I'm feeling pretty tired, whenever I'm feeling challenged, I don't forget my grit, my sisu, my intestinal fortitude, endurance, the ability to endure. In Finland, they have a word for that. It's sisu. And they have a saying, I got this. And that doesn't just mean like I can do it. That means if anybody can do it, I can do it. So. We, we say it together, it sounds like this. Ha Lusa! Ha Lusa! It's a beautiful sound. So is that sound of that breakfast bell ring, and I can hear it. Let's finish strong. Last set. Last set. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Microphone in the mouth. Extra training. Love it. Get that extra training. Okay, sit out. Get back after it. One. Two. Trying to keep my hip close to that hand. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. 
Ha, 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 ha. Side crunches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. All right. Give yourself a hand. That one. That was fine. But of course, we're not quite done. Because we still have to do the finishing to the dessert. We should start calling it the dessert instead of homework. Because it really does put the cherry on top. And uh, it balances us out as warriors because we're always working on things that we need. So we're gonna practice that squat, 20 reps. When your heart rate's coming down, this will help your heart. One, two, three, four. We're training for those birthday squats that inevitably we're gonna have to do when we get back to the dojo. Six, building up those legs, building up those legs. Booty was just talking about how much she loves the training because she could finally feel it in her legs. She was back in the day when we were using barbells, she just wasn't feeling it. Now she's uh, having to adapt. Getting those reps in. 20 reps. Chest stands up, butt comes down. Now you're going to do 10 knee grabs. You get these by now, practicing every day. Here on the ground, hands in the chest. Going forward, grabbing those shins, shoulder blades back to the ground. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now, uh, we're gonna do our swimmer. This is uh, helping our computer posture and our uh, couch sitting muscles here. We're on our back, pushing the joists into the ground. Lifting up that head, chest. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do 20 of these, not touching the floor. Keeping those fingertips spread. Pulling the shoulder blades up. And then down. So you're gonna let the shoulders drift where you naturally want to drift. You don't have to make them do anything. If you put your body in the right position, they'll just go there. You don't want to create any adaptations. You don't want to interfere with the body's motor patterns. You're trying to restore movements that the body used to do before we were trapped in the cage all day long. So that's what that swimmer is for. Working on the postural muscles. Just bringing everything back to life. Oh, wow. Uh, as you can see, I got a little bit of a workout in, and uh, I think some of you did too. So, uh, in conclusion, to this, the, uh, go back to the beginning, back to Act One. Once the salesman's mindset had been such that he knew he was gonna be okay, he knew everything was gonna work out for him, he had faith deposited in his brain for one, from one conversation with his wife. Now, can you keep the faith? And can you insert that idea into your own head so that you can continue to show up for yourself for your kids, for your families, and continue to bring out the warrior within. <laughs> no, it's all mind games. It's all mind games.